Now, how do we show environmental justice issues? Showing environmental justice issues involves, again, locating places that have disproportionate burdens of environmental toxins, and then people who are exposed to them, who generally lack social, political, and economic power. So how do we do that? Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to use the three-layer map. In mapping in the social sciences, uh, one of the things you can do is layer different social phenomena. Right? Policy map lets you do three of those. It's perfect for students getting involved in these sorts of issues. So one of the things we can do is we can start to add layers that can start to actually visually display environmental justice issues. So if race, for example, is an important aspect of environmental justice issues, let's pick uh, demographics, we'll choose race, we'll choose non-white. Now because this is a single layer, well, we can actually specify what percentage of people within a particular area we want to try and identify. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say there's got to be at least 50% of the people in that area as non-white. Instantly the map changes. This is still Wilmington, Delaware. The purple areas are the places that meet the criteria of the first layer. 50% of the people identified as non-white. Now, what else is associated with environmental justice communities? Uh, obviously income or poverty. So let's take a look at uh, incomes and spending. Let's take a look at poverty. Um, <clears throat> people in poverty, all of them. Now I'm going to specify at least 25% of the community has to be identified as falling below the poverty threshold. Right? Changes a little bit, a little bit. The patterns are still there, but what this means is that according to uh, <clears throat> the poverty threshold, at least 25% of the people in these areas, in the, in the color-coded areas, um, fall below the poverty line, right? Now, we've identified already geospatial uh, relationships between social phenomena, race, and poverty, right? We've already done that. Just by showing the color-coded areas here, which meet both of the criteria for the layers of this map, right? So we've got a couple of layers already. Now, how do we, how do we show, you know, show this to be an environmental justice community? Well, one of the other things that this allows for uh, quality of life, for example, it allows for what are called data points. If you see up here, you have data layers, which actually involves uh, uh, layering according to census track or zip code or something of that nature. It also has data points, specific geocoded points of, of different phenomena. One of the things you can ask about are brownfields. An informal industrial site generally places that have potential hazard, health hazard, because of the environmental burdens that are still there for economic or residential activities, right? These are what brownfields are. So now, if we click on brownfields as data points in the area of Wilmington, very quickly, very simply, very easily, you see communities of color, you see at least 50% identifying as non-white, you see communities that are poor, at least 25% of, of that community falling below the poverty line, and you see brownfields. So you see concentrations of areas that are environmentally uh, polluted, legacy contaminants, and so forth, formal industrial sites concentrated precisely where uh, people with a lack of social, political, and economic uh, opportunities live. This is policy map. We did this in 30 seconds. Uh, it is an absolutely, absolutely phenomenal teaching tool. It's real data from real sources that students can use from anywhere that we can also manipulate.